everyone. Hope you're having a good day. My name's Andy. My channel is Finding Value. Uh, today we're going to do our daily technical analysis update of commodities, work our way through the dollar, yields, precious metals, and commodities and ETFs that I follow. And I want to give you my financial opinion as we go through it. Uh, if you want to join finding-value.com, if you guys need any help with anything, check it out. It's a community. Um, we do talk about individual companies there uh, and portfolios and all sorts of stuff. Let's dive in uh, and see <clears throat> what's going on in the markets. So uh, we've got the DXY here. We are pulling on back in the DXY. And this looks like we're gaining a little bit of momentum to the downside. We were down about 0.3%. Uh, that's generally uh, a tailwind behind a lot of the investments uh, out there, a little bit weaker dollar. When you price something in dollars and you have a weaker dollar, then the price of that thing goes up. Put it that way. Uh, the two-year yield, uh, it does look like we want to go lower. Uh, this is an inverted bloody nose. So it's a big red candlestick with not much of a bounce. Uh, so I do think that we could see this head on lower uh, for the two-year yield. So short term. We're seeing some selling pressure, and we could see this blow out to the downside. Is this the beginning of the yield curve uninverting uh, and potentially having some sort of um, slowdown in the market? It's possible. The 10 year yield, uh, it is down quite a bit today, about 3%, 2.94%, kind of gapped lower. A uh, little bit of buying pressure coming back off that bottom. Uh, but it is undoubtedly above support and it is in an upward momentum, just a little bit of a big down day today. The 30 years the same way, upward momentum, uh, but we just had a downward move today. Uh, we'll see if that continues and if this will roll on over uh, like the two year is. And we could see the two year come down and the 10 and 30 year go up. Uh, that is a possibility on, on different ends of the, on the duration front. TYX TNX ratio slightly higher today. That's going to be uh, positive for gold and silver. And again, we haven't made any large moves up, so uh, we're just kind of chilling out right where we're at. Uh, TLT, which is bond prices, they went sideways today, down 0.14%, but basically sideways. Is it trying to put in a bottom here? Uh, we're going to need more data for that. Uh, gold. Up uh, 9.5% or $9.5 an ounce, 0.5%. Uh, it's not that convincing though. Uh, there's no large green army. The candlesticks aren't large in terms of their bodies. Uh, they kind of just gap up and go sideways, gap up and go sideways. Uh, so again, we're going to have to wait and see what happens here. This is a lot of selling pressure uh, and it's not a very strong bounce. This very well could roll over. Uh, silver. 0.3, again, we're not getting a huge bounce. We do have a pretty strong candlestick here. Uh, this could still go either way. We've got large selling pressure. This is your kind of move to try to go against that. And it's been pretty weak uh, in terms of that bounce. Uh, platinum futures, back within the pattern. Again, it's not a huge, strong bounce. It's not people just running into it yet. So. And we'll see. We'll see what happens over the next few trading days. Uh, platinum up quite a bit, 3.76%. Uh, again, I'm not convinced that this is the spot to be. Uh, it very well could go up. Uh, but what I've seen historically is <clears throat> this is generally the metal that does better um, with technology and all that. Kind of that, that recovery phase of, of real estate. Uh, XAU to gold ratio. Coming in here, uh, looking quite, it's, it's looking good. 0.86% up today where the gold and silver mining companies outperform gold. So, so there, there is some positioning in gold and silver mining companies. Uh, but we still haven't broken that big long-term downtrend. Is this trying to put in some sort of reversal here? Could be. Uh, we want to watch it and see what kind of bounce we get in gold. Uh, and we'll watch the gold and silver mining companies. CRB index, uh, slightly lower today. Are we going to try to break up here uh, or are we going to try to roll over? 
I don't know what it is yet. We have a lot of downside momentum here, and I'm not convinced that this is going to go up yet. So I've seen a lot of these. They come up to this resistance line, this white resistance line here, uh, and then they, they roll over. <clears throat> it, it might come up, touch it, and then come back and roll over. So let's we, we got to get break up through back through this for me to say that this is uh, going to move on higher. But overall, we are still above all of this support. It did break out, and this could be that return move that we get. Uh, CRB to S&P 500, still down a little bit, 0.6%. Uh, looks like it's trying to put in a bottom here for the ratio. I do think commodities are going to outperform stocks, and it will go higher over time with pullbacks along the way. Uh, GDX up 1%. Uh, again, what I don't like seeing, I don't like seeing these large down you know, down moves right before it means the momentum's to the downside. We don't have a super strong bounce, but it's hanging in there. That's what I'll say. Uh, and that, that goes for all these. Uh, what I generally like to see is the downside momentum uh, go sideways like this and then break up. It means that you're, you're turning. Uh, what, what I've seen is this big downward move, and I think we're going to have to go sideways for a while, kind of dissipate that momentum. Because <clears throat> uh, gold and silver sold off quite a bit, and I think we have to dissipate that momentum first before heading higher. Uh, and that's where you get these bottoming patterns, like a uh, you can get like a inverted, you know, like a head shoulder head, you know, an inverted head and shoulders, those types of things. That's that momentum kind of dissipating. Crude oil down a little bit. See how we have this large selling pressure here? Makes me think that we're going to come back and do something like that. That's my guess, uh, but it, it doesn't mean it has to. It could it could obviously rip at any time. There could be news. There could be war. There could be whatever it is. But um, that's generally what I've seen with these large selling pressure candlesticks like that. Generally, you have to work that momentum off before making a, another surge higher. Uh, TTF gas. That's a surge higher right there. So what this one did? This one looks really good. You can see that we've we've got the big momentum. Let me go on the the weeklies here. Big momentum coming down. It worked it out, squeezed it up, and this is gonna this is gonna pop higher. It looks like uh, that's what I'm used to seeing. You get to see the big green candlesticks, small red candlesticks. Uh, that's generally what I like seeing, or that it goes up in the stair stepping pattern. Uh, those other ones, when you look at like crude, you get this large selling pressure day, and it's like, what the heck is that? You know that that's that's no good. So generally, this takes a little bit of time to work its way out, all this selling pressure. Uh, but that's what we're seeing in gas. TTF gas looks good. Nat gas is looking pretty good. We've lost a little bit of momentum. You can see that the buying and selling pressure, see these, the size of these candlesticks, the bodies of them, they're smaller. So that means that you're slowing the momentum where we could get a little bit of a turn or maybe we come back like that with a couple of small down days. We'll have to see what the selling pressure looks like. but. Before it looks pretty good. We've got kind of this roundish bottom that's starting to move to the upside. We we broke out. It looks good. Uh, XOP, yeah, you know me. Uh, another one looks like we got a little bit of momentum slowing today. Uh, opening and closing price basically sideways. We're up against that resistance line, which is the this is the neckline going across of the inverted head and shoulders. We're right up on it, and. We could roll over here. I mean, it's a possibility. We've got large selling pressure here, uh, kind of a weaker bounce. Uh, it took one, two, it took one, two, three days to come up, and this was one, two, three, four days to come down. And then you can see that we moved a lot larger distance to the downside. <clears throat> so we could roll over uh, anywhere uh, here if we don't get the buyers to come in with some some size. Uh, OIH also same thing, bearish engulfing, bearish engulfing. Large, uh, front, full selling front attack. <laughs> and then the bounce is in a strong. So I'm looking to see if this is going to roll over uh, or bounce, do a couple of trampoline jumps is what I call it. Uh, we'll see. That's what I'm seeing right there. But uh, bigger picture view, though, whenever this works itself out, it's going to, it's got, it's got a long ways to go to the upside. Rough as uranium trust. We are getting that little bloody nose on the monthly. Uh, dailies, it looks like we're trying to work our way out, do some sort of maybe pattern like that. 
Actually, let's leave that in there. That's, that's my best guess. Let's see if this thing, how this thing rolls out here. I'm going to throw this here. I like that. We'll do it like that. Let me know what you guys think. You think it's going to do a one, two, three, little move and then break? Um, that's what I've got. That's what I'm going to put there. <laughs> we're going to take a guess at it. URA, uh, same thing. We, we're struggling to go up uh, to some degree, kind of underneath this resistance over here. Uh, is this going to roll over? Is it going to go sideways? Uh, again, if, if I was trading this, I wouldn't be trading this. It's not a clear enough pattern. Um, we've, we've got kind of strong, the bearish engulfing into a bullish engulfing there, and we're kind of just moving sideways. Um, if you're trading, what, what you do is you don't trade every single day. Uh, what you do is you wait for a setup like down here. You buy that. You buy it on the breakout and back test there, and then you ride it on up. Uh, and that's all they net. They just net these small little gains. If you're a trader, uh, they don't they don't try to ride this thing like a investor does. Um, so a lot of the times when you're looking for a setup, you know it's not good here. It's not good here. It's not good here. Uh, it's not good here. Not good here. Like you wouldn't invest here. You'd, you'd want to invest like on the bullish engulfing here and the retest. Like those are two spots, or maybe in this dead period down here. If you're really aggressive. You put like a stop loss down here uh, and then you buy it. So there's times where I'm like, you know, I look at this, I look at the stock and it's like, well, well you know, what direction do you think you're going to go here? It's like, I don't know. I mean, you kind of have to wait. Uh, you wouldn't be trading it necessarily. Uh, URNM, again, it looks like it's just moving sideways, consolidating to some degree. Is this a shoulder head shoulder that is coming out with a neckline? And do we come back down? which would be the size of basically the head. Uh, if it were to do that, uh, it would be something on the lines of like, you know, $37 is where it could go down to. Uh, is $37 from 43, is that like the end of life thing? No, it's not that big of a deal. Not that big of a pullback if it were to occur. So that's what we got there. Uh, and again, guys, this could also rip to the upside very easily if, if buying pressure comes in because it's such a small little sector. Uh, URNJ doing the same type of setup there. We haven't broken uh, this resistance through here, which we're trying to break through. Uh, if we break through that and close above it, I think we're going higher. Uh, if we don't, we start to roll on over and break the neckline lower, we're going to probably move on lower. Uh, Tan getting that bounce. Bullish engulfing the bounce higher. That looks really looks pretty strong. Uh, and, and it occurred at about 46, 47 bucks. Uh, we came down here, even went all the way down to 45. And it looks like we're getting that support where my line is drawn. Uh, and then you can see we got the little wick starting on the monthly candlestick. So I do think that this has a potential to go up. That looks good. COPX uh, up 1.87%. Uh, it is getting a little bit of a bounce here. We'll see if we can get towards the top of this trading channel. Lithium up 3%. Is this a false breakdown where we slingshot back into the pattern and get moving? Uh, it could be. We're seeing strength on the overall S&P 500 and NASDAQ. So uh, lithium could be uh, putting together a, a potential move to the upside. REMX, same thing. Bullish uh, piercing on the weekly. There's the dailies here. We're starting to come back up, trying to get in, back inside the pattern. S&P 500, bullish engulfing here. We came up, got a little bit of selling pressure towards the end of the day. Uh, what that looks like on the dailies, you can see we came on up and a little bit of selling pressure towards the end of the day there. And you could say that we have broken that trend line on the very, very short term. It's a very steep trend line too. Uh, look at the NASDAQ, same thing, same setup. A little bit of uh, Reversal candlestick, little wick at the top there. Uh, we'll see what this looks like. Now, this could this could sell off here, guys, and go lower. We've got yields dropping down on the two-year. We've got a broken trend line to the upside here, you know, broken to the downside here. Uh, and we could see selling pressure across these guys here <clears throat> where this crescendo is lower. So, you know, be careful here. Be careful. We could see a pullback here at any second. 
Uh, NASDAQ and S&P, the yields getting weaker, the inverted yield curve added all together. We could see a dramatic sell-off uh, could, could come. Um, KRE, this is the regional banking ETF. It's hanging in there. Uh, and, and actually, it doesn't look that bad from a longer term perspective. It looks like it's trying to find some support right where we're at. Uh, emerging markets uh, up a little bit today. That one looks not too bad. Uh, weaker dollar, weaker yields. Emerging markets like it. Uh, I think home builders like that weaker yield too. This is mainly following the overall markets, S&P and NASDAQ when looking at it. Uh, this kind of has a rollover effect here and we'll see if we get some selling pressure here to the downside. For XHB. Now you back out. Is that the Batman pattern? That has formed. Uh, could be. Uh, which means we could see some downside. Potentially. Downside perhaps. Uh, looking at Moo. Uh, Moo is heading on up a little bit. But again guys. I don't like seeing this strong selling pressure here. Uh, but we'll see if we can get a good bounce. We got to see a bounce if we're going to move. Uh, good buying pressure. It's got to step in here. Uh, it's okay at the moment, but it's got to keep coming. Otherwise, we could easily roll back over. Um, copper futures doesn't look that great, guys. Big selling pressure, bearish engulfing there. Uh, we sold off, and this is kind of rolling over almost into another bearish piercing type pattern, uh, which generally works its way lower. So, again, we got to see if we get the next couple of trading days. We want to see what we get. Is it going to be a big bullish engulfing? Are we going to get a big upward surge? Or are the sellers going to come out here and push everything lower? Iron ore, this has just kind of been grinding lower. This is your return move after the breakout. You broke out here. This is going to be your return move. And then eventually you'll, I think, take to the take off to the upside. Uh, interesting setup here. We're seeing a little bit of weakness in stocks, but we're seeing, you know, iron ore looking pretty strong. That's generally an indication of the economy, I would think. Uh, but uh, it doesn't look too bad there. Nickel up 0.6%. Again, though, I would not get in front of this. Still downside. Uh, just getting sold, sold, sold. No real bounce. Uh, aluminum also getting sold here. It's picking up some steam too. Pretty strong selling pressure day to day. Uh, so we could see lower downside in aluminum spot pricing. Uh, Baltic dry index remaining very resilient, very strong. Looks good to continue higher for dry bulk shipping or Baltic dry index, I mean. Uh, Newcastle coal, coal's looking pretty strong. Looks like it's trying to base out here. Uh, like I said before, strong selling pressure. You got to work off that momentum, kind of work your way sideways. And it's really strong if you kind of lean upwards and break that way. Uh, I, I see that a lot. Generally, you get like two humps. You get like kind of two humps here. And you bust. So that's good there. Uh, we got Bitcoin down a little bit today. Uh, just moving sideways. And Ethereum, again, just moving. Uh, this is starting to break to the downside here. Um, kind of look at it from that perspective there. <clears throat> Could be heading a little bit lower there, guys, for Ethereum and Bitcoin. Uh, is a overall market going to sell off? Uh, inverted yield curve. Yield is starting to drop on the short end. Um, let's take a look real quick at here's the two and ten hanging in there at the moment. But uh, generally, when this short end drops, that's when you can have problems. Looks like it's trying to hold itself up here. <laughs> so we'll see which which direction it goes. Uh, we don't have a clear direction yet, uh, but I know a lot of people they're wanting to jump on this big recession call, uh, major sell off and right now um not it's not in the bag yet not in the bag yet so uh that's what we've got for today guys give me a thumb up for the content subscribe to the channel uh subscribe to the website if you haven't already i'd love to have you part of the community and uh right now kind of just waiting to see what the market brings us um a lot of the times when you're if, if you're trading uh, trading is really a whole bunch of nothing you do a lot of nothing and you wait for the setup and then you take the setup uh, setups don't come up, come that often. That's why you scan across uh, a bunch of different sectors to try to find those setups. And uh, a lot of the times, not really doing much, just sitting and waiting for the setup to occur. Uh, right now, we're kind of waiting for the next surge higher. And right now, it's 
we may go lower before we go higher uh, in some of these sectors. All right, uh, that's what I've got. Uh, we'll catch you guys next time. This is Finding Value.